So it really is irrelevant if it's a quote unquote true spiritual experience or not in the, in the scope of the mind. Because if the mind believe it believes it, it's going to have an effect on the patient or on the person, almost like a placebo, a spiritual placebo, if you will, that if you believe it, if you believe that you had a near-death experience, I mean, because a lot of people go into comas every time and come out or go into surgery and come out and don't have near-death experiences, but other people do. And I'm not discrediting people who say that they do. Obviously, that's what it's all about, talking to people like that and their experiences. But they're, but to be, you know, to look at from a devil's advocate, if you will, be devil's advocate, um, there are people who might not really have had those experiences or saying it or so on and so forth. I'm just curious if they truly believe it, if they truly believe it, then it's absolutely something that happened to them and it is going to affect them in a spiritual path, hopefully in a positive way. But I like what you said that they are, you have to ground them. Because if you're walking around saying, I am Jesus, okay, how far are we going with this? <laughs> like how, because that can go down a dangerous path really quickly. So it's kind of like trying to stabilize them. And when you say stabilize them, what do you mean? Or ground them better. How do you ground someone like that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So when this happens, I mean, people can have, deeply seemingly spiritual but also very psychotic experiences right and working in a psychiatric emergency room you see a lot of this you see people presenting as mohammed um having like a whole bunch of things that and and for some people you're able to ground them and make the experiences go away and kind of bring them back into reality and for some people it becomes a part of a chronic condition and for other people it becomes this healthy beautiful way in which they connect to right. the world and connect to spirit so um, at the end, it's really a question of, do you have, like, is this something that aids your life or is this something that undermines your life? And mm -hmm. was this spiritual experience? So all spiritual experiences are psychological in nature because ultimately it's not really about the spiritual experience per se, but it's the human experience of spirituality. It's how do you process it in your psychological state and give it meaning? And what is that? mean to you and how does that shape the life that you know you are leading does it add to your life or does it not and if it's destabilizing you then you need to stabilize people sometimes through medication sometimes through grounding techniques sometimes just through sleep and exercise and you know rest and food um, and removing whatever it was so what are things that can you know push people over certain drugs can do that um mm -hmm not sleeping for a long time can do that certain medical yeah. conditions can do that psychedelics sure. sometimes can do that um very deep stress can do that if people have propensities to for instance psychosis so all of those are things that can push people into what appears to be a spiritual experience but be very destabilizing so uh, i assume that you've heard of the term kundalini awakening in your in your mm -hmm. research from my understanding of kundalini awakenings they are they can be dangerous on an energetic level um, from, again, from thousands of years of Vedic <laughs> traditions and things like that, talking about these kind of things. Um, if the person who's experiencing it is not prepared for it on either ner their nervous system hasn't been prepped for it or they haven't been prepped for it, I've heard that it can be dangerous. Have you had any experiences with patients with Kundalini awakenings that it was just too much for them at the time? Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, you have different chakra systems, right? And chakra, like, uh, it's more the Eastern way in which energy is based in seven different parts of your body, um, and possibly others up above. And so with the Kundalini awakening, it becomes dangerous when you have too much energy going up these chakras and not enough grounding. So like the first, second and third chakras are not sufficiently spinning and strong and grounded. And then the energy goes so high that it's like the person flies away and mm. they can become psychotic. It could be just completely overwhelming to them. Um, they can feel emotions that they don't know how to deal with. And, and that's, you know, not the worst of it. You know, it, it could be mm -hmm. much, much worse. And so right. that requires grounding. And, and also a, a Kundalini awakening could also be the most amazing connection to spirit a person has right. ever felt. So right. it so depends on the context in which it's done, the person themselves, their biology, their genetics, how prepared they are, what it is that's leading to this, if this is something that's happening through meditation versus through drugs, 
um, and right. have their stabilized and grounded into it. Um, Joe Dispenza is a meditation practitioner and he works a lot with Kundalini energy and people there can have, you know, their, like the energy really move up and sometimes, you know, it could pop and oftentimes it's a beautiful thing, but it could also be a scary thing. Yeah, it's, it, it, it absolutely, it, you, you mentioned something in regards to, um, plant medicines, uh, triggering a Kundalini awakening. You're, you know, psychedelics, um, ayahuasca, DMT, they are, it, when used properly, very powerful, very good for spiritual awakenings and things like that. But I, I love this this statement that the Maharishi said in regards to psychedelics. He's like, taking a psychedelic is like taking a sledgehammer to a wall to get the sunlight to come in where meditation is putting in a window. And I thought that was such a beautiful way of doing it. If people go open up themselves to a psychedelic and they're not done responsibly and not done in a safe environment, it can easily open up doors that they weren't invited in to in many ways, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. So with so much of the research that's being done, that's why patient selection is so important. And then the set and the setting is so important. And so for patient selection, so if you're looking for psychedelics like psilocybin, MDMA, things like that, um, you aren't going to have anybody with a history of psychosis, schizophrenia, schizoaffective right. disorder, bipolar, mania, or even a first degree relative who might have that because that increases the risk of, you know, being pushed off into like into a place that's, it just means that their body and these medications are not, um, you know, might not be simpatico. Um, so that's number one. Those are, so you choose the patients and or the people to whom you administer these medications very carefully. And then the set and setting, right? Set is your mindset. You have to have the right mindset. You have to go in there. You have to be prepared. You have to be open. Sometimes scary things will come up and you don't want to avoid the scary things. You actually want to welcome them in and be able to metabolize and process them and be able to transmute this energy to be open to the darkness and learn how to transmute darkness into light. That's part of what a lot of, um, I think, just life in general is about. That's the set. And then the setting is obviously your environment. And that includes the people administering the medicine. You make sure you have trained the people around you, not anybody who could, especially if you're in an altered state, take advantage in any way. You're in a place that's very safe, that you feel secure. So there's a lot of ways to ensure that the experience that you have is very positive, but there's no guarantees, of course. You can do all that and still you can have an experience that's difficult. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. A psychotic break is not a good thing ever, but having a, sometimes a difficult journey or ceremony or um, trip could be really important and very instrumental for a person's growth. To watch the full video, click on the link below and don't forget to subscribe.